This story out of Texas is heartbreaking. This is Cesar Olalde, an 18-year-old from Texarkana along Texas's border with Arkansas. He lived in this house with his parents and siblings for the past 12 years, but that all came to a tragic end last week. We received a call um, stating that uh, the suspect had uh, allegedly um, caused some harm to some of his family members and had the intentions of possibly committing suicide by cop. Luckily, that didn't happen. After a short standoff with police, Cesar was surrounded and cops made their way into the house. What they found was shocking. Inside were the bodies of Cesar's parents, Ruben Olalde and Ida Garcia, and the bodies of his siblings, including his five-year-old brother. According to local media, Cesar called the cops and confessed to the killings, shooting each family member one by one and then dragging the bodies to a bathroom. Cesar also said he did it because his family members were cannibals and they were planning on eating him. There's been no reporting yet to suggest that's true. A neighbor said this. They were real nice people. Really good to me and my wife. They really looked after us. It's unclear where the teen got the gun, but two things are clear. America is in the middle of both a gun violence epidemic and a mental health crisis. A web of problems, from insurance company greed to a shortage of mental health professionals, is making a bad situation worse in our country, while Americans continue to stock up on guns. There are literally more guns than people in our country. And despite the good guy with the gun propaganda, studies have proven owning a gun puts people in your house more at risk of being killed, not less. Cesar's been charged with capital murder and is being held on $10 million bond. He could face the death penalty in Texas. Damn, that's sad. Mental health is real. I think he was suffering for something that nobody knew about. Hopefully he get the help that he need because that's just so tragic. It's sad to see that he went through, you know, what he went through. I mean, he's definitely going through something. We don't know what. Hopefully somebody can help this kid out because, I mean, living with what you just did once you snap into, and I don't know him. I'm just assuming that he, you know, listened to what the neighbor said, that he didn't come from a bad family. So what was the issue? What was going on is the, is the question. <laughs> Very scary. Do you like bikes? I love bikes. Yeah? I uh, unfortunately crashed mine. Uh, What'd you have? I was just starting out. Uh, it wasn't too crazy. It was like uh, 600 cc's. Nothing much. It's okay. But I was 18. I got in the air and fly. Are you okay? I'm good. You can't do this job in the night, you know? Yeah. But, um, I don't think I had a bad feeling. I think a thousand is. Oh, that's good. For me, you know? BMW are really popular. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Those are How old are you? I'm 20. Oh, you're okay. How old are you? Mm. Yeah, I'm 21. Yeah, you're 21. Don't hit you with a 24. No, no, I'm gonna hit you with a 24. That's retarded. Oh. But you gotta cuidarte because people are not nice to cops. Yeah, but I do it because. Uh, I had a couple of cops who were nice to me. It changed my life, so I want to do oh. that for others. You know? Just like out here, I'll stop the bad guys, but I'm also going to stop the people who are very nice. Okay? So, what was it? Raul? Thank you. Raul. Raul. What's your name? Taro. Carolina. I'm here. You ever need a cry on the sidewalk again? Okay? I cry a lot, so... At this point, what was done was done, and I was ready to just turn myself in and go to prison. Oh, and look at that, the officer was right there and saw the whole thing. People like me belong in the penitentiary. Just take me in, officer. So here he pointed out that I was going 30, 35 miles an hour, which was actually the speed limit. And that the people started walking before the lights started to flicker. So I didn't do anything illegal. 
So I shook his hand and I thanked him for everything. He even tried to make me feel better and complimented my bike. I kinda had a panic attack so he was just trying to calm me down and make sure that it was safe for me to drive my bike home. He told me to breathe, that everything was gonna be okay, and he even offered me a juice box so that I can feel better and get my breath under control. Once I calmed down, he said that we should move out of the street and get on our way. But at this point, this man is like being the nicest man I have ever met in my life. He calmed me down, which no man ever calms me down. They tell me to calm down, but never like this. Man, I know exactly how she feel about um, something crazy happening. Definitely in those type of experiences. Well, I should say in that type of situation, I've been in that type of experience before. Not saying I wanted to be because of, you know, mentally and physically all this shit. You never be the same after it. And I know how she felt after seeing what she could have possibly did. Yeah, that was the best thing to do was to calm herself down. But um, we just gonna see, you know, how, she, how the rest of this play out.